Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the rural area of the Matanuska Valley near Palmer, Alaska. The Palmer Hay Flats Game Refuge is not exactly the Alaskan backcountry, given it's only 40 miles from Anchorage. The area is low elevation and under 100 feet above sea level. The 28,000-acre refuge protected coastal and freshwater wetlands, mudflats, and swampy ground crowded with willow, alder, spruce, and birch trees. In the lower wetlands, it's common to see moose with doll sheep and mountain goats on the peaks above it. Predators here include coyotes, wolverines, wolves, black bears, and brown bears. The Palmer Hay Flats Game Refuge used to be farmland and acts as recreation and hunting grounds for locals. Around the refuge, there have been several reports of a brown bear raiding poultry pens and chicken coops. At Polaris Hatchery, it killed 21 turkeys in one night. Following the raid on his turkeys, Don Dyer began tracking the bear and reported that it flattened an eight-foot horse wire fence like nothing. Dyer noted that this bear is wily and, and very clever. At one point, he stayed up waiting for the bear, but gave up about 5.45 a.m. due to being tired. Immediately after Dyer vacated his post, the bear struck. Other landowners had their run-ins with the bear as well. During a raid on a chicken coop, the owner of the chickens fired a 10mm pistol several times at the bear, but investigators from the Department of Fish and Game could not confirm it if it had been struck by any of the rounds. Unsure now if the bear was wounded, residents began to worry that it may come back and be more dangerous than ever. They were on edge and kept a wary eye out for tracks and other signs the bear had returned. On Wednesday, September 21st, 2022, a 41-year-old man, whom we'll refer to as Ron, and his 9-year-old son, whom we'll refer to as Ryan, were stalking the wetlands in search of a moose. They spent the better part of the day hoping they'd find a moose that met the requirements for harvest. The father and son were armed with a high-powered rifle, but no source indicated that they were packing bear spray. By around 6.30 p.m., the moose hunters were pushing their way through some brush when they stumbled upon a huge brown bear sow and her two-year-old cub. Upon seeing the bears, Ron knew this was a dangerous situation. He knew the bear would do anything to protect her cub, and he would do anything to protect his son. He assessed the situation and grew concerned when the brown bear charged forward in a bluff charge, and then another one. Hoping she would take advantage of the space, Ron and Ryan tried to back down slowly and give her and her cub room. The sow didn't take this action as an act of contrition and exploded toward the hunters, scattering bushes and mud as she came. As the sow bore down on the duo, the hunters scattered a few steps. As she ran by Ron, she swiped at him, gashing him, and then did something any parent would never wish to see. For some reason, the sow focused her aggression on Ryan instead of Ron. Before Ron could do anything to deter the sow, she swatted and bit Ryan after knocking him to the ground. The sow's paws and jaws flashed in movement so fast that Ron couldn't process the speed. It seemed like his son would be torn to ribbons by the sow's claws, and the only choice he had was to shoulder his rifle. It isn't stated what caliber of rifle Ron was hunting with, but whatever it was had enough power to drop the sow and stop the attack on Ryan. Ron approached Ryan's side and helped him to his feet. Ryan was too injured to hike out, so his father picked him up and hiked back toward the vehicle. Just after 6.37 p.m., first responders received a call reporting the bear attack on Ryan and Ron. They arrived at the location and could see that Ryan's injuries were serious, but Ron had minor injuries from the attack. After rushing Ryan to the Matsu Hospital in Palmer, the medical staff there recognized that his injuries were way too serious for their level of treatment. They arranged to have him transferred to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle for more advanced care. The same evening of the attack, wildlife officers arrived at the attack scene and located the sow's carcass. Ron's rifle round proved fatal for the bear, leaving her cub without its protector and provider. 
A necropsy on the sow's carcass revealed no human garbage or food source in her digestive tract, and no remnants of chickens or turkeys either. This doesn't necessarily mean she wasn't the bear that raided the poultry operations, as the poultry may have cleared her digestive system by that time. A search for the orphaned cub was undertaken by ground and helicopter, but met no success. According to the information Ron provided to them during his interview, the cub was not injured, but due to the circumstances, wildlife officers planned on euthanizing it if they could find it. They cited that older cubs do not do well in captive situations, so euthanization was the only option. Speaking of cubs, our Cub Tier membership on Patreon, linked below, will give you ad-free early access to our episodes, and the three bucks a month goes a long way in helping me continue to produce content like this. Your support is much appreciated. The turkey farm raids and chicken coop invasions stopped as soon as the sow was killed, so the likelihood that she was the bear executing them was considered. Two weeks before this attack, Nicholas Caparis was attacked by a brown bear a short distance away, and that's another episode on this channel for your review. Between 2000 and 2017, a total of eight fatal bear attacks occurred in Alaska. With 29% of all bear attacks in the United States occurring here, it is ground zero for the conflicts between bears and humans. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I am left with a few questions for you. Given they had a few seconds before the sow attacked, would bear spray have made a difference in this attack? Why do you think the sow didn't take her cub and leave? If Ron hadn't killed the sow, would it have cost Ryan his life? I will gladly read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.